You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, and thanks for joining me yet for another special edition of One Guy, One Gal, and a Lot of Wine. While Jim is off still on a hiatus with wedding and job changes, I am here to do a show with a very close friend of mine and also fellow wine lover, Ms. Kaylin Lawler, owner of Balance Massage Therapy here in West Hartford. Thank you for joining me today, Kaylin. Thanks for having me. And nothing has been more controversial in my wine life <laughs> than the infamous Chardonnays. And I know throughout our years of drinking together, um, our opinions are very different on Chardonnays. So I've been wanting to do a show on the Chardonnays to highlight four different types of Chardonnays to see if my palate can yet again be massaged into liking a Chardonnay. <laughs> and much like massage, wine can be very relaxing. Absolutely. I think you and I have contrasting opinions on what kinds of Chardonnay we enjoy more. So. Um, I think this should be fun to taste and see what the palate brings. And what's even more controversial, ever since the last show, are the infamous Amici Italian aerating <laughs> wine glasses. Now, those who saw the show last month realized, might have realized I never got a chance to actually compare the wine out of the Amici wine glasses. Uh, my two guests did. They were kind of novices, and I wanted to see if they could really taste the difference. And they seemed to be able to pick up a substantial difference in flavor, though we did not try white wines. So I'm thankful to the Italians and their Amici aerating <laughs> wine glasses to see if I, too, can experience the Amici difference. <laughs> so actually, our first uh, Chardonnay tonight, because we have four tonight, so I want to make sure we get, get, get through all four of them, mm -hmm. is a toasted head. It's basically your solid, typical Chardonnay. I think it's a North Coast. Uh, no, it's just an American Chardonnay. It's got a good, good vibe to it. Yep. I have never had this one. And I purchased it because it had some of the characteristics that I've read about that I might find enjoyable. So, Kaylin, I'm going to first pour some in the standard wine glass. Okay. And then some in the Amici Italian special aerating glasses. Same for me. So which one first, Bob? So which we're we going to do? do the standard wine Perfect. glass. Standard white wine glass. Cheers. Cheers. Mild aroma. Good looking legs on there. Now, for me, this is characteristic of a Chardonnay, though not as maybe oaky or buttery as a real solid, thick Chardonnay. Yeah, this, it's rounded, but it doesn't feel like uh, what some people term to be a butter bomb, <laughs> where it just tastes like you're almost licking a, a stick of butter. It's, it's a little bit more balanced for sure. You definitely get some fruit there. Mm -hmm. I mean, a Toasted Head makes a lot of other wines other than just the Chardonnay. But uh, to those who I think like me, who are just trying to experience Chardonnays a little bit more, this might be a good first choice for somebody uh, that doesn't want to get shocked with the, see, I'm already, I'm already uh, <laughs> criticizing Chardonnays early in the show. <laughs> I happen to be a Chardonnay lover, and this, I think, is a good middle ground for someone who, like you, traditionally might like Sauvignon Blancs, mm -hmm. a little bit more crisp, a little bit more fruit forward. This, I think, has some of those components, but it's just a little bit softer on the palate. So. It's definitely soft. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those of you who are watching the show now, I guess this will be airing in June. I would say that this was a good. This would be a good summer wine for sure. Um, shellfish or uh, cheeses. I did bring some cheeses in in case I was so overwhelmed by the Chardonnay. <laughs> I did something to quickly cleanse my palate. But 
these cheeses actually would probably go good with any type of white wine. Yeah, and I would even go as far as serving this with something that had, like you said, a, a cheese or even a cream based. So maybe a um, a lighter cream soup or you know a chicken dish or something that had that sort of cream essence to it. I think that this would actually pair pretty well with that. Well, you know, this is actually an English, I think it's a Havarte. Oh. So I'm going to try this with the Chardonnay All right. and see how let's that see what, goes. Let's see what we've got here. I love cheese with wine. Mm. Actually, more so white wine with cheese than red. I find pairing cheeses with reds can be a little bit more complicated. Wow. Now, see, we've done numerous shows where we've tasted food with wine. That is a huge difference yeah. after eating those cheese and tasting this. Mm -hmm. um, did you like it better or worse? I did like it better. Yeah. But I think that's because it cut one of the characteristics that you actually enjoy about Chardonnay's <laughs> down for me. Right. So, so after it did taste more fruit forward, it tasted more... Flat. I, no, flat's not the right word. I think more neutral. More neutral. With the cheese. Mm -hmm. Which could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you're looking for. <laughs> depending on what you like. <laughs> but that actually was very enjoyable. But now comes the big test. Two people who have been drinking wine for well over a decade, with lots of experience in wine. I think you may or may not have seen the Riedel show we've done yep. where there was a significant difference in the flavor of the wine. All right, so let's... Let us see. If oh. The noise is good, if you yeah. hear the noise. And you know, I, um, after watching the last show, they were talking about sort of the sound that I didn't quite pick up on, but now I definitely do. That's you don't, interesting. You're not supposed to do it too long, even with the okay. white wine they said in the box. An even more sort of full mouth, rounded. It, it, it even takes that, the fruit forward away even more. You know, it does. And that's very interesting because it, you know, some people don't want to take it away from a Chardonnay. Right. This might open it up a little bit too much for some people's taste. Mm -hmm. it might bring it sort of out of that um, sort of characteristics that they like. And you know, I, since the last show, I did not get a chance to do some further research onto the claim that the Amici wine glasses <laughs> actually disperse alcohol more. <laughs> Hence, you don't drink as much alcohol. I do not think that's true because it hasn't been tested here in America. Though, you know, the Italians seem to think it does. So without causing an international incident, we will say that the, the door is yet to be... Uh, it's, yeah, it's to be determined. It's to be determined. It's to be determined. Yes. I think that that's... But it does change the flavor, which any air rating type device, I think, would do. It's also interesting that whenever I think about Italian wines, I tend to think of them as having less alcohol to begin with. Big, huge California cabs, for example, have a lot of alcohol. So maybe that's part of what was going on with the lessening of the alcohol, too. That's right. The alcohol content on the toast head, um, if I can see from here, is a 13.5. Hmm. Uh, you know, that's relatively that's, high, especially for a white. It is, but Chardonnay's can be a little high in the They can be, content. yeah. yeah. The lighter, sort of summery, easy-drinking wines tend to be less so because you're drinking them quicker in the sun and you don't want to have a couple glasses of wine and be flat on your back. So Well, that's the thing. When, and people who have seen shows in the past, you know, I, I enjoy a good, crisp, cool white wine in the summer. But you have to sort of be, use some common sense as to how you're drinking in the summer. If you're right out in the hot sun, it's probably not a good idea yeah. to just chugging a glass, <laughs> wine after, a glass of wine right after another. It's just not going to help your head up very much. No, so. no, for sure. Mm. Well... For that Chardonnay, I'm going to say, not thumbs up, not thumbs down, eh, Ooh. almost all the way up. So like a three quarters? I'm going to give that a three quarters. Oh, nice. Three quarters on the Toasted Head. And I love Toasted Head. I've, I've actually had Toasted Head before in the past, and I really enjoy it. And I even more enjoy it in these delicious air waiting glasses. So I'm a thumbs up on that one. All right. So we yeah. have our first one thumb up, one three quarters thumb up. <laughs> and I am not hating my first Chardonnay of the evening. Now I'm excited about the next one, the Dionysus. From, it's from Washington State, I believe, and it's uh, from uh, independent growers in Washington State. And it's supposed to be the Chardonnay that even people who don't like Chardonnays are going to love. It's, besides being in a beautiful bottle, Washington State produces actually some really fine wines. Terrific wines. I know, mm -hmm. I think you've had some. I think I've, we've had some together. Yep. Um, I've never had a Washington Chardonnay, though. So I don't know as I ha if I have either. There, maybe this is just me, but... I don't know that they're specifically known for their Chardonnays. Um, Washington does, I uh, believe, some Pinot Noirs yes, that are that's right. really delicious. So this will be interesting to taste what this is. 
Once again, all these wines that you see on the show tonight are available locally. Do some searching online. Um, I think uh, one of your new stores that you enjoy um, just changed owners. I think it's in West Hartford also. What, what, are, what is it now? They are. They are the Wise Old Dog, and um, they've been terrific. They had a, a pretty significant facelift from sort of your local liquor store into a store that um, carries terrific, uh, I would say, lesser-known wines. So they might have kind of the standard brands that you've heard of, but then um, the owner there, Jacob, really makes an effort to bring in sort of the great value wines that maybe people haven't heard of. Which and we're a big I, fan of here. <laughs> I know, me too. And I'm loving it. Every time I go in, he's got something new. We're trying th you know, different things. And you know, I love to taste wine. So, Well, that's one of the things that I enjoy doing is trying to get people to actually try different things off the beaten path. You yeah. know, get away from the Kendall Jackson's. I mean, it's fine if you like it, but at least try right. something different. Yeah. And support a smaller organization. You yes. Know? And, and if that's the palate that you enjoy, then there's lots of different options for, um, for having something that's a more local deal. Well, like I said, I'm very excited about this one. This is my second Chardonnay I've never tasted. Um, Legs look heavy on this one, too, though. Ooh, completely different aroma. Yeah. I get vanilla in that. I'm getting even a little bit of, like, barnyard. Wow. Wow. This is why I love, this is why I love wine, love doing the show. That is significantly different in flavor profile than the first one. Much more crisp. Uh, I'm just curious for the Dionysus. You know, they say it's a lot, very minerally from uh, some of the, the, the notes on it. Um, I have hard with, I have a hard time with minerally. I, I don't always know what that is or what it tastes like. Because uh, um, I'd have never licked a rock before, and usually that's what they equate, like, you know, be, being minerally. I pertain that to maybe like if you have a well water and you drink oh, okay. raw, uh, water. Yep. Uh, that can be very minerally. Yep. Um, I don't exactly know. It's almost like a metallic. That probably, it's definitely an acidic flavor. Yeah. But um, it's not bad. Oh, but, no. You know, and they, in a lot of wines, that's considered to be a, an attribute. It is. Yeah. And once again, that's uh, not for everybody's taste. You know, a lot of people don't like the complexity of when you get to those flavors. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, they said green apples and Bartlett pears here, but I'm not getting that. Well, maybe a little of the pear. I am actually getting the pear on that. Nothing not, on the apple, though. No. When I, it's hard for me to disassociate green apple from... Sauvignon Blanc. That's just the immediate pairing that I, in my mind, think of. And this doesn't. This tastes like a, a lighter, balanced Chardonnay. Yeah, definitely not a Sauvignon Blanc. No. Though. I mean, if somebody poured this for me without telling me what it was, I would no way ever think it was a uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. Though I might not go right away for a Chardonnay necessarily either. No. Sometimes uh, these that don't have the huge, toasty, oaky, buttery overtones to them are in that kind of middle ground where it could be a, you know, a differently balanced Pinot Grigio or even something from you know, Spain or Argentina that you haven't had before. Yeah. So it's kind of hard, especially with blends, I well, find. Well, my philosophy is when I'm looking at cheese, when in doubt, eat cheese. I'm so in. I'm going to try the cheese <laughs> with this Chardonnay. Okay. I'm gonna, that's a New York uh, sharp cheddar or sharp. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm. Not quite as a significant difference no. in, uh, as the uh, first wine. I completely agree. But it's a different cheese. Mm -hmm. And it's a different wine. It's a different wine. <laughs> so I'm going to wait till I try the Amici aerating wine glasses, I feel like an infomercial, <laughs> to see if that is a significant difference. You know what I like about these glasses, regardless of whether or not they actually are doing what they're supposed to be doing, is they're big. Everybody, that, they're big. They <laughs> yes. look substantial, and uh, but you know you have the the, um, the aerating wine bottle, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes that's very cumbersome to keep on the table or, or to use. I like the fact you just pour it in a glass and spin it around. I think it's great. And the decanter, the nature of it is that it's large at the bottom for more surface area and then narrow at the top, but it's super awkward it's to get that awkward. last bit out. Sometimes you end up just splashing it everywhere and nobody likes to waste wine. No, <laughs> especially if it's later in the evening and, yeah. you know, we've had too much wine anyways. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's Or see just enough wine. Th or just enough or wine. Or just enough wine. You know, 
Once again, I'm just going to say, I think what the glasses are doing for the white wine is just opening it up a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. And in general, I would say that reds may need to be opened yeah. more so than whites. You know, As a, you know, painting with a broad brush, if you will. It is a broad brush. I mean, people, you know, you can make your own decisions on sure. this, but a lot of people would say you never need to aerate or do anything with a white wine. It's good to go right out of the bottle. You don't even need to let it sit, generally, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, this does change the flavor of the white, but for people who love Chardonnays and whites, particular types of whites, this may not be the kind of thing you're looking for, for a wine-enhancing product. Yeah, and I, um, this... This piece here, or this this wine here, I got a little bit of a shift, but not a ton. Not a ton of a shift there. Well, out of the two wines so far, the Dionysus and the Toasted Head, uh, I'm still leaning towards the Toasted Head more than the Dionysus. I didn't get a lot there. For me? For me, at least. Oh, yeah. So you're you're leaning towards the Toasted Head also? Right now, yes. Wow. The okay. Dionysus, just, there's something about the flavor that's just a little off for me. Yeah. And I don't know if that's because uh, it's just my palate yep. with the shards, or it's just... it's. I you just don't prefer don't like, it. Don't prefer it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to share that opinion. I, I prefer the Toasted Head as well, both characteristically and, and specifically with these wines. So. All right. So we, so far we're in agreement almost on oh both wines. Oh my gosh, Bob. Who would have thought? With you can the, point that out, yeah. With uh, Chardonnays that we would be on the same page. We're like nemesis, nemesi. <laughs> Wars have almost been fought over Chardonnays between me and no, Caitlin and our wine no, no, parties. No, 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 we, we don't fight, but... Uh, but whenever I go to Bob's house, I don't bring a Chardonnay for them. <laughs> yeah, no, that's I'll, bring a, have... I'll bring a light white, you know, a, a, a Spanish wine or something that maybe is off the beaten path to try. All right. Well, I know the next one you've had, Josh. I have. Yeah. And, I, I uh, really like Josh. I highly regarded. <laughs> this is the North Coast Chardonnay that I was talking about earlier. Oh, that perfect. I jumped ahead. And some phenomenal wines have been produced on the North Coast. Josh has a very good reputation in general. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've done some research on this one too. I mean, I haven't actually had this one either. There's not one wine on the table that I've actually had. Oh, that's fun. So I've had three out of four. What does that say? <laughs> <laughs> See, and I'm citrusy. Yep, and I'm I'm even actually getting a little bit more of the vanilla toastiness on this one. Now I start, I, I think we're starting to approach the, the buttery characteristics yeah. that I know you're a big fan of. Um, I get a lingering aftertaste on that. Yes, this definitely has a, a, a buttery or a creamy aftertaste, for sure. And I believe the Josh is partially barrel fermented, I believe, from some of my research. It is, and um, part of, there's a very complicated process called, called malolactic fermentation. Oh boy. I know. And essentially what that is, it's, it's a secondary fermentation when the wine is fermented. And it, cr it changes some of the more acidic palate into a more creamy palate. And so when it, a wine like that goes through that process, it sort of softens it, it rounds it, it gives it that creaminess, that buttery that you would associate with it. So well, less of the fruit forward and more of the... I actually, uh, cream. I like this. I mean, it's a little creamy. I get a little bit of the creaminess that you're talking about. Um, I actually like it better than the Dionysus Chardonnay. Yes, I do as well. So, I mean, that's saying something at least, but... Um, I think it's pretty easy drinking. I don't think when you... It doesn't feel like you have to chew it. <laughs> Sometimes you drink Chardonnays and they're so thick and heavy that yep. it just is too much in the mouth. Well, there's... I'm not going to say this one's thick on the mouth. I actually think this is pretty enjoyable. Yeah. So... So that's I'm gonna wait till I drink it out of the Amici wine glasses <laughs> to make my final opinion on this. Mm -hmm. I love that sound. That's uh... it is. It's interesting. My my problem with these glasses. The only thing would be, as I sit, I just tend to sort of swill the glass around. So I may, I would yeah. aerate this till the cows came home. <laughs> yeah, it's doing the same thing with the Josh as it's been doing with the other ones. Yeah it's sort of dispersing the flavor profile a little bit. And uh, I don't think that's something that people want to do with white wines. Yeah, I don't know that, that these would be the perfect <clears throat> match for um, aerating a lot. Maybe just one or two little swirls around, but um, you know, you don't want to put too much air in it or 
it kind of, it, oh, it could, I, I would guess it could over aerate it, wouldn't you think? You know, I'm going to try the cheese factor first. Okay. I'm going to go with the English one again. Right, I'm going to stick with the, what was this one, a sharp cheddar? That was a New York sharp cheddar. A New cheddar, York sharp yep. cheddar, okay. So we'll see how this goes. Not very good. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't enjoy that either. Hmm. Interesting. This was not my favorite pairing. No, actually, that did not go very well at all. Mm -hmm. I think our first best pairing has been the first... Uh, the toasted head. The toasted mm -hmm. head. I also find that there are certain wines that are just easier to drink alone or easier to drink with food. And yeah. so maybe that's, um, maybe that's the, the case for you with this one. Well, like I said, so far I've been somewhat surprised at how I've liked the Chardonnays. My least favorite has been the Dionysus. The Josh I have enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give that not a thumbs up completely, but I'm going to give it about the three quarters up again. Okay. Um, don't let that you know affect your opinion on the. Uh, the oh, line. I like the Josh. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one, why don't you tell us a little about this one? This is your choice for the night. This is what I brought for the evening. Um, we wanted to look at sort of a scaled palette, so something a little bit more fruit forward, maybe one or two somewhere in the middle, as far as balance with. Uh, the toastiness and uh, the creaminess. And so this Fry Brothers is, um, I would think, a pretty good example of, a, of something that's buttery and creamy and toasty. So um, I think price point on this, another good value wine. I think it's anywhere between um, maybe $14 and $17, somewhere in that range. So still a good value. It's got a good nose. You know, I like that. The first sip. <laughs> oh, I really? actually like that. And to me, this is this is the quintessential Chardonnay. That's fascinating. I know. I like it so much, I'm actually sweating. <laughs> <laughs> and I think sometimes you have to maybe taste it directly after or before another one to see if that's the style that you like. I find this to be extremely sort of soft in the mouth. That's, you know, that's, Smooth. that's what it's, I would say. Yes, it's very... Um, it massages your mouth. It, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, it's still light, though. It doesn't have a heaviness to it, although Chardonnay is one of the heavier of the um, you know, whites. It, but That's one of the reasons that I've never been a, a big fan of Chardonnay, because generally they are, tend to be a little bit on the heavier side. I drink whites throughout the year. Um, Chardonnays, I tend to drink more in the wintertime. Mm. So now that the summer's here and, you know, we're out a lot, and whether you're at the shore, I know yeah. you're a big Newport fan like I am. Yeah. You know, so if you're down at the shore, you, you want a good white to drink. I can drink that. I can drink that one. I think I could. Absolutely. And without a doubt, this could pair very well with even more wintry type foods, heavy creams, a fettuccine sauce, or uh, an Alfredo, I think this would be just the absolute perfect pairing with. Well, this is actually much more enjoyable than I thought. And I yeah. know you were saving this one for the end because it's so heavy and buttery. Yes. But I really actually like this a lot. Yay. How, well, am I converting the, you? The controversial <laughs> Chardonnay show am I converting you? is I love turning it. out not to be so controversial at all. <laughs> all right, let's give it a spin in the old Amici right, glasses. So let's see what we've got here. See if there's... And you'll notice a difference right away, I'm sure, because you're such a fan of this type. Yeah. And again, with I don't notice a huge difference, but I do, I, because I, this is the flavor palette that I enjoy, I enjoy this just that much more. <laughs> well, you know, once again, uh, these Amici glasses are great, but I don't think they're for white wine. So I'm glad I was actually able to try these tonight to determine that they actually do change the flavor of the wine, though not necessarily in a positive way with white wine. I think red wine, it, I think it worked great. White wine, if you want to actually temper the flavor of the white wine, yes. If you want to, if you want to savor the actual profile of all the wines we had tonight, probably not a good idea. Uh, yeah, I would, I would recommend these for reds. And it's quick, which is nice. Yeah. It's, it, mm -hmm aerates quickly. So I want to talk really briefly before the end of the show that, uh, you know, as a massage therapist and, uh, you know, supporting businesses here in West Hartford, uh, Balanced Massage Therapy, um, 
Do you actually find that wine actually works at the same way that massages do in regards to for your own self or for relaxing in the evening or well, stuff like that? Well, <laughs> certainly at the end of the day, I uh, do enjoy a glass of wine. And I think that um, enjoying a glass of wine at the end of anybody's day is a nice way to unwind. Um, and, and massages is along that same line as far as a holistic approach to how to be well. And, you know, a glass of wine rolls very nicely into that every day, so. Well, I know throughout the years we've had many enjoyable wine parties. Yes, many. And, uh, you know, I know <laughs> you also are, you are engaged and you'll be getting married, I think. Uh, uh, next April. Next April? Yeah, absolutely. And I think I will be. To a fabulous man by the name of? Josh. Josh. <laughs> The irony of why I love the bottle so much doesn't fall far from, from the man. So. And actually, I think Carrie and I will be joining you in your yeah. uh, on-location, beautiful Mexican wedding, right? I know. We are very excited about this destination. So um, we're having our closest friends and family come, and it's just going to be a celebration. And we're, we just couldn't be happier. You know, what I'm actually interested in is I never drank wine in Mexico. Uh, don't. Mexican wine isn't exactly well, what it's chalked up to be. <laughs> yeah. um, but the good news is, is that we can get good wine there. <laughs> Not necessarily from Mexico, but we'll have it in Mexico. Well, you know, it's fascinating because, and I use that word a lot on this show, I know, I'm a Spock fan, I just like using the word fascinating, that uh, Mexico actually should have the climate to actually have a lot of wines. I, you know, I don't... They get a ton of sun, obviously. I don't know what their rainfall is, and I think that maybe the rainfall would affect their terroir, obviously. Um, and anytime you have coastal Mexico, it's going to be a more sandy soil. So I'm not sure how conducive that is to growing good grapes. But you've actually had some Mexican wine. I'll say the last time I was there, I had Mexican wine, but let's just say it it was at sort of the end of the evening. What not, didn't matter? And it really was... Hey, Mexican wine, yay. <laughs> so. Well, I didn't try a piece of cheese with this Josh, so I'm going to give it a shot. Okay, great. I'm going to go back to this. And did you, what time was this again? That was the. Uh, the was it a Havarti? No. A, uh, English. Mm, an English cheese. Yep, English cheese, yep. Hmm, that actually worked with the Josh. It, that's terrific. You know why? Because the English cheese in general is a, is a, a creamy cheese. Yes. Uh, and with smooches. the Fry Brothers, it's perfect. It's, it's actually a perfect pairing. Yep. Um, you know, for the people that watch our show, yes. I just want to say that I've been waiting to do a Chardonnay show for a long time, and it turned out great. I like a lot of the Chardonnays tonight. Actually, there's nothing that I hated, so... <laughs> so I'll take that as a win. <laughs> I'm going to give that two thumbs up for the Chardonnay show. <laughs> the Michi wine glasses, not for white wine, so don't try them for white wine. And Kaylin, I want to thank you for being on my show tonight. Yay. And uh once again, um, you've been a great guest, and I really appreciate all the times we've been able to have wine. Thank you. So, until next time, I'm Bobby P., and keep me in your wine cellar.